Hi kids, it's Nana, and today I'm reading chapter five. The book is How to Eat Fried Worms. And basically, Alan and Joe are trying to plot something so that it's not so easy for Billy eating these worms because the first one went down so quickly. They're concerned that it's gonna be too easy for him to eat 14 more worms. So comment under the video and let me know what you think. Do you think that he'll be able to do it? Here we go. The Gathering Storm. Alan and Joe stopped in the orchard by the pile of fresh dirt. You think he'll be able to do it? asked Alan, biting his thumbnail. I don't know, said Joe. He can't do it, said Alan. How could anybody eat 15 worms? My father will kill me. Fifty dollars. He ate that first one awful easy. Forget it, said Joe. If he doesn't give up himself, I'll figure something out. We could spike the next worm with pepper. He'd eat one piece and then another, talking to Tom, and then all of a sudden, he'd sneeze. ha -choo! Then he'd sneeze again. ha -choo! Then again. ha -choo! A faint look of panic would creep over his face. He began to wonder if he'll ever stop sneezing. He clutches his stomach. His eyes begin to water. Hachoo, hachoo. You know, Billy's awful stubborn, said Alan. Even if it was killing him, he might not give up. Hachoo, hachoo, cried Joe. He falls to the floor. I bend over him. God, I say, call his mother. It's the triglossocrosis. His eyes bleed up at me. Hachoo! Remember that business last summer, said Alan, gnawing on his thumbnail, when it was 95 degrees in the shade and I dared him to put on his winter clothes and his father's raccoon coat and his ski boots and walk up and down Main Street all afternoon. Hachoo! Hachoo! They went off through the orchard, Joe sneezing, sighing, rolling his eyes, pretending to be Billy suffering from a dose of peppered worm. Alan moaning to himself about how stubborn Billy could be. Fifty dollars. Hmm. The second worm. Billy sighed. On the plate before him lay the last bite of worm under a daub of ketchup and mustard. What's the matter? asked Tom. I don't know, sighed Billy. He picked up the fork again. Does it taste bad? No, said Billy wearily. I just taste ketchup and mustard mostly, but it makes me feel sort of sick. Even before I eat it, just thinking about it. He sighed again and then glanced at Joe and Alan, talking to each other in whispers over by the window. What are you whispering about? Nothing. Then what are you whispering for? Nothing. It's not important. Just something Joe's father told him last night. What? Come on, finish up. It was nothing. We'll miss the cartoons. Billy shut his eyes and popped the last piece of worm into his mouth. Chewed, gayed, clapped his hands over his mouth. Gulp, gulp. Toppled backward off the orange crate. Sprawl, sprawled on his back in the chaff. He gazed peacefully up at the ceiling. Joe and Alan stood over him. Open up. Billy opened his mouth. Wider. See any Joe? Nah, he swallowed it. Okay, let's go. Red crash helmets and white jumpsuits. After the movies, Tom walked home with Billy. Tomorrow I'll roll the crawler in cornmeal and fry it like a trout. It's not really the taste, said Billy. It's more the thought. When I start to eat it, even though it's smothered in ketchup and mustard and grated cheese, I can't stop thinking, worm, 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 worm. Gaggles of worms in bait boxes. Drowned worms drying up on sidewalks. A worm squirming as the fish hook gores into him. The soggy end of a worm dragging out of a dead fish's mouth. Robins yank yanking worms out of the lawn. I can't stop thinking of worms. Yeah, but if I fried it in cornmeal, it won't look like a crawler, said Tom. I'll put parsley around it and some slices of lemon, and then you can concentrate. Think fish. All the time you're waiting in the barn, 
all the time you're eating, keep saying to yourself, fish, 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 fish. Here I am eating fish, a good fish. Trout, salmon, flounder, perch. I'll ride my mini bike into church. Dace, tuna, haddock, trout. Wait, you'll hear the minister sh shout. Fish, 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 fish. Shark, haddock, sucker, eel. i race my father in his automobile. Eel, flounder, bluegill, shark. We'll race all day till after dark. Billy cheered up. Think how they'll all stare. I'll rev up the aisle, zip around the front pews, down a side aisle, under the stained glass windows. My parents would kill me. <laughs> Reverend Yarder peered down over the Bible stand. William, he'd cry. William, you take that engine thing out of here this minute. Yeah, and then they'd come chasing out after us, said Tom. Billy laughed, waving their arms and yelling. We'd leave them zigzagging round and round, in and out, among the gravestones and monuments of the cemetery, and then we're off down the Soundgate Road, leaving them draped over tombs, panting and shaking their fists. Yep, yep, yelled Tom, dancing around and boxing in the air. And that Monday, we'd smuggled into the class disguised as Raymond Dooley, because he's so fat, and hide it in the coat closet. And then when Millie Butler said anything, anything at all, even something like, excuse me, or if she even sniffed, we'd dump a whole bottle of ink over her head and run for the coat closet, overturning chairs and desks behind us to slow up Mrs. Howard. She'd come after us, fuming and being so mad and shouting threats, and suddenly the doors of the coat closet would slam open and out we'd roar on our mini bike in blood red crash helmets and white jumpsuits, our scarves streaming out behind us. And we'd whirr and roar and round and around the classroom while Mrs. Howard knelt among the overturned desks and chairs, sobbing and crying helplessly into her hands, and then rum rum out the door and up the hall, thumbing our noses at the monitors, Brackety, brackety, brackety up the stairs, stiff army tacklers into Mr. Simmons' office up on his desk. Broom, broom, a backfire into his face and zoom out the window as he topples backward in his chair in a hurricane of quiz papers and report cards. And then crunch, landing on the driveway, we would roar off down the highway to Bennington and join the Navy so Mrs. Howard and Mr. Simmons and our parents can't punish us. Well, that sounds like a great idea. The third worm. Hmm. Kids, I wonder how this is going to go. All right, here we go. Tom ran out of the kitchen of Billy's house, holding the sizzling frying pan out in front of him with both hands, the screen door banging behind him. Alan threw open the barn door when he saw him coming. Tom thumped the frying pan down on the orange crate. There, he said breathlessly. Done to a tea. Look at her, all golden brown and sizzling. It looks good enough to eat. Yeah, said Billy. He poked the worm with his fork. Tom took off the pot holder glove he was wearing. Think fish, he said. Remember, think fish. Trout, salmon, flounder, perch. I'll ride my mini bike into church. Eel, salmon, bluegill, trout. Wait, you hear the minister shout. Clam, flounder, tuna, sucker. Look out here, we come old Mrs. Tucker. Lobster, black bass or I'm sorry, black bass, oyster, and stew. There goes New Orleans. Here comes Peru. He leaned over Billy and whispered in his ear, fish, 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 take a bite, fish, 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 okay, second bite, fish, fish, fish. See, just say fish. The plotters. Geez, you think it'll work, said Alan and Joe. Suppose he doesn't. He didn't seem to pay much attention today. Don't worry, said Joe. We got him thinking. It takes time. I got it all doped out. Trust me. The fourth worm. 
Wow, he actually got down three worms. Now we're on number four. Let's see if he can do it. Billy ate steadily, grimacing, rubbing his nose, spreading on more horseradish sauce. Tom bent over him, hissing in his ear. Fish, 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 fish. Billy paused, watching Alan and Joe whisper by the door. He swished the last bite round and around in ketchup and mustard. All of a sudden, he said, That's not fair. They can't act like that anymore. Every time I swallow, they lean forward as if they expect me to kneel over or something. And then, when I don't, they look surprised and shrug their shoulders and nudge each other. Come on, said Joe. Cut it out. We can watch you for cripe's sake. We're just standing over here by the window watching you. We're not doing anything. No, you're not, said Billy. You're whispering and acting as if you expected something to happen every time I swallow. It's nothing, said Joe. Forget it. Look, we'll turn around and look out the window while you swallow. What do you mean, it's nothing, said Billy. What's nothing? Oh, come on, said Alan. It's just something Joe's father told him the other night. It's nothing. Well, what? What? It'll just worry you, said Alan. It's crazy. It's nothing. Forget it. Hmm. Billy tore the napkin away from his throat. Tell me. It's nothing, said Joe. You know how my father is. He's always yelling about something. Tell me or it's all off. Well, look, it's nothing, but the night before last... I was telling Janie about you eating worms, and my father was on the porch and heard. So he threw down his newspaper and says, Joseph. So I says, Yes, Pa. And he says, Have you eaten a worm, Joseph? And then he grabbed my shoulders and shook me till my hands danced at the ends of my arms like puppets. It's for your own good, he says. So I stuttered out, It's not going to do me any good if I'll shake to pieces, is it? Jenny was wailing. My mother was chewing her apron in the doorway. Alfred, she cries, what's he done? You'll derricate him. Has he hauled down the American flag at school and eaten it again? Has he? So what's the point, yelled Billy. Get to the point. What's it? have to do with me. I'm coming to it, said Joe, wiping his nose, but I wanted to show you how important it is. My father nearly killing me and all. He sneezed, and then Alan began to sneeze and finally had to hobble off into one of his horse stalls, hugging his stomach to recover. Anyway, said Joe, wiping his nose again and hitching up his Levi's. So my father told my mother he thought I'd eaten a worm. A what? says his mother, dropping her apron and clutching the sides of her head. A worm, says my father, nodding solemnly. So my mother fainted, collapsed all helter-skelter right there in the doorway, and lay still, her tongue lolling out of her mouth, her red hair spread over beautifully over the door sill. So I, will you cut it out, Billy yelled. Who cares about your mother? What does it have to do with me? I think he's lying, said Tom. Who ever heard of someone's mother fainting and her tongue hanging out? All right, yelled Joe, apologetically, stamping around. All right, now I won't tell. You can die, Billy Forrester, and you'll have to carry him home. Tom growled all by yourself. Nobody says to me, who cares about your mother? All right, I'm going, Ellen. He, he yelled, they're insulting my mother, I'm going. Don't, said Alan, running out of the horse stall and grabbing Joe by the shirt tail. Don't. You got to tell him. Even your mother said so. Mine too, no matter what. Ain't it a matter of life or death? I won't, said Joe, starting toward the door. Alan pulled him back. You got to. How long have we known poor Bill? Six or seven years, for old time's sake? Joe, because we're all once in kindergarten together... Think of the agony he'll face. Joe, the pain and the blood and the gore. Billy was on his knees by the orange crate, wringing his hands, not daring to interfere. But when Joe glanced suddenly back at him, he whispered, Please, Joe, for old time's sake. Well, will you apologize for insulting my mother? I do, said Billy. I do apologize. I'm so sorry for insulting your mother. 
So Alan and Joe began to sneeze again, and this time had to bend over and put their hands between their legs to recover. Tom, who had been watching them suspiciously, trying to make out what was going on, started to say something. Shut up, hissed Billy fiercely, turning on him. You keep out of it. So Joe, on his, with his story, how his mother had been carried upstairs to her room, how the doctor had come, shaking his head, how his auntie had sobbed, pulling down all the shades in their house, how that morning his mother had finally come downstairs for the first time, leaning on his aunt's arm, pale and sorrowful. How? Yeah, said Tom, sure. So why? What does eating worms have to do with your mother? Nobody will tell me, said Joe, opening his eyes wide. It's been three days now and nobody will say anything. It's just like the time my cousin Lucy got caught in the back seat of her father's Chevrolet with the encyclopedia salesman. Nobody will tell me why there was such an uproar. He wiped his mouth, but one thing's for sure, it's worse than poison, probably. Crap, said Tom. Oh, yeah, said Joe. But then he and Alan had another sneezing fit. Achoo, achoo, achoo. Sprawling helplessly against each other. Look at them, said Tom and Billy. They're not sneezing, they're laughing. Come on, eat the last piece and let's get out of here. You really think so, said Billy doubtfully. The sneezing did look an awful lot like a little giggling. Sure, look at them. Tom gave Alan and Joe a shove. They collapsed in a heap, sneezing uncontrollably. Billy watched them. Yeah, sure, they weren't sneezing. They were laughing, weren't they? Hay fever, gasped Alan. Hay fever. Ah, uh, you never had hay fever before, said Tom. How about yesterday or the day before? Come on, Billy, open up. So Billy, half believing Tom and half not, glancing doubtfully at Alan and Joe, allowed Tom to poke the last bite of worm into his mouth and lead him out of the barn. Alan and Joe sat up. It didn't work, said Alan. Joe began to brush the chaff out of his hair. You wait, he wasn't sure. Tom was, but he isn't eating the worms. You wait, Billy's worried. He was before. That's why he said he felt like he was going to throw up. But now he's really worried. Suppose I wasn't lying. Did you see his face when I said my father shook me? I thought his eyes would bug right out of his head. Alan laughed. Ah, geez, yeah. And when your sister and your mother fainted? <laughs> Joe stopped brushing the chaff out of his hair. Except why you laugh so much, for Christ's sakes. If you'd kept a straight face, even when Tom wouldn't have guessed. Ah, uh, you laughed first. What do you mean? Me, I first laughed. I did not. You did so. You laughed when, when he yelled at you for the first time. You wiped your nose. They went off through the meadow arguing. So the next chapter I will read tomorrow. And it's titled Tom. So hopefully he will, Billy will be able to get some more worms down. Please comment under my video and I will read more later.